Hey, now we got we got some fun stuff today. I love doing fun stuff. It's kind of I call it kind of like uh, the Hoosier story inside the big city. Uh, you know, there's a lot of schools in Chicago, Morgan Park, Simeon, mm -hmm. Whitney, Young, all those schools, and uh, they get a lot of attention. They go. Uh, across the country play play everywhere, yep. Yeah, and they boycott games and do things like that. Well, there are some actually some really nice schools in Chicago, and one is called Kelvin Park, the Panthers. They were 0-20 last year. They have turned it around, and they won the North Green Division this year. And with us right now is head coach uh, Tony Gaddis. And, Coach, congratulations, that big win over Rickover. Tell us a little bit about that game and how exciting it was for everybody at Kelvin Park. Hey, how you guys doing? Good. Yeah, glad to be here. Uh, hey, that was a great win for the program, for the team. Uh, got a little close at one time, but, you know, our guys were able to pull it out. I'm really proud of the kids. You know, what's, been, what's, what's been the key for turning around the season this year? I'm sorry? What, what's been the key to turning around the season this year? Oh, we had uh, – the, the key was just getting them all on the same page. Uh, I think last year there was a lot of stuff going on, uh, you know, with the coach and the players. This year was about just getting everybody on the same place, having the same goal and the same focus. And, you know, Coach, I know you're a Kelvin Park grad. How much does that help you as you uh, communicate with the kids on this team? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a Kelvin Park grad. I'm not, okay. I'm just putting it on the wrong way. But I okay. graduated from Crane in uh, 1978. Okay. Uh, what happened was I coached Kelvin Park for eight years uh, from 2006 to 2012. Uh, and then I ended up moving to Wisconsin because my mom got sick. So it was pretty good to come back to a program that was winning when I left. And I had heard about all the adversity I'd been going through. So it was pretty good to come back and put something together positive for the team and school. You know, how tough is it, is it to coach in that Chicago public league? I mean, obviously you've got a lot of good teams. You know, and obviously some, some issues within the district, those kind of things. How tough is it to, to put together a competitive team there? Well, um, that, that's really hard. <laughs> how about all the schools are downsizing now. Uh, the public schools are downsizing now, so you don't have as many kids coming out as you used to have. But uh, it, it was pretty good. I mean, I think I had a good rep when I left, and kids want to play for me. So that's always a good thing when you get kids to come out that want to play for you. And it, it helped that we had a kid, uh, Kendall Williams, transfer in from Jordan. Uh He helped the program tremendously. He was our leading scorer. Uh, I think he led us in assists. I mean, DeVar Young Clark did a great job for us this year. Where did he come from, Coach? Which school did he come from? Thornton. Oh, from Thornton. Hey, you know, you look at it, you know, Morgan Park had this boycott about not wanting to leave their home gym. You know, it's a small gym, 276 people. But I heard that the Kelvin Park gym might be even a little bit smaller than the Morgan Park gym. Are they going to get you a new uh, gym if they get Morgan Park a new gym? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Uh you know, it's funny because they, uh, you know, we practice. I coach football also. We practice at the park across the street. And they're building new uh, parks and football fields for other schools. And we've been there for almost 100 years, and we can't get a new field. So they're <laughs> getting a new gym. I don't know. We are smaller than Morgan Park. You know, how tough is it to, to get the kids motivated in that situation, though, when you see some of the, the publicity that the other schools get, you know, talking about getting new gyms and, and stuff like that in other places, how tough is it to – to get your kids motivated to go out there and play, or, or maybe not very tough at all behind that? Well, no, it's not tough to get them to play, but one thing I try to explain to them, if we win, that's how you make changes. That's how you get stuff to change. Just like the Morgan Park people are saying, they're winning, they should have a better gym because they're getting bigger crowds in there. So, you know, we're in the same situation. We just got to keep winning to make people see it. You know, when you look at the whole situation in Chicago, you know, there's a lot more schools like Kelvin Park that don't have some of the uh, press and some of the chances to travel all around the country. This year you went out in the suburbs and you played in a really good tournament. Did you use that to kind of build up on, say, kids, we need to work harder to get better and maybe uh, up our level in the city? Yeah, well, I did that uh, so we could see what we got. You know, one thing about playing uh, early in the season in those tournaments, you get to get a uh, judgment of your team, what kind of kids you got, the character, uh, the attitudes, uh, and what you need to get straight going into conference play. So that was important for us. And even though we didn't win a game in that tournament, I'm looking forward to it next year. We're excited about it. You know, let's let's talk about the North Green. How do they do the systems in Chicago? You know, I understand, or the Green North, I know that there's different color codes. There's the red and the white and the green and stuff. Oh, the, green is, the green is actually the bottom. It starts at the green, 
uh, the blue, then the red, I mean the white, then the red. So we got three more to go before we get up in the top conference. Uh, and then the city playoffs are based off of our top two conferences always. Now, you- Back in the day, it used to be everybody went to the playoffs. You had a blue division, you had a red division, but, you know, they changed that recently. So, so how do you work your way up there, up the ladder there? We have to win the conference. Okay. <laughs> well, next year we got to go win the blue conference. <laughs> so you get to move up and you lose all your uh, rivalries and got to start all over again, huh, Coach? Yeah, well, you know, I, I've been coaching in the public schools for almost 17 years, so we got a lot of rivalries for it anyway. Coaches know me, refs know me, uh, you know, the kids know me. It's about, it's about building. Calvin Park, you know, has been down after the last year. So it's about building this year. And I thought we did a good job of that. And, uh, and I look forward to playing. I'm, I'm going to try to get games with some of those guys like Rick Over, uh, Disney too. Those, those are good games. Great games. So yep. I would love to play those guys again. You know, I've been talking to your AD a little bit off and on too. He thinks pretty highly of you. Does it help to have somebody that supports you that well like your AD does? Uh, definitely. Uh, you know, before Coach Oreham, there was a guy named Kai Heineken who supported everything that I did, the ideas that I had, everything. He asked me, why did I want to coach at Calvin Park when I had been coaching at all these other schools who had sports programs? But I told him I wanted to go somewhere and build a program that would last for a while. So he inspired me. Uh, Coach Oreham uh, trusted me, inspired me. The principal, uh, Miss Allison Fox Trump, Ms. Norma Colfrey. Uh, my assistant coach Bob Silver, they all these guys all encouraged me to do what I love to do. So I'm, I'm having a good time. You know, you said you coach football and basketball. What are what are you better at? Uh, basketball is my sport. Yeah, gotcha. coach football, basketball, and track. And the head coach of all three. Yeah, you're going to be the track coach too. Are you fast coach, or are you just one of the big guys that throws the shot put? No, I was one of those distance runners that never won. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. Hey, you know, when you when you look at all this stuff and going down the line, you don't get to go to the state tournament this year because I know there was some situation before you came on as coach. There's not a playoff or anything. Winning that conference title, and I hopefully they're going to give you a trophy that Rami Manuel presented to you, that he'll come in and, and give you that trophy. How big a deal is that for your basketball team, really, when you look back on this season? Oh, wow, that's good. That's good. You know, I was so nervous before that game. I, I was so excited and nervous. I was, I was thinking to myself, people don't know how far I came. You know, I was uh, last year I was a freshman coach in Wisconsin at Lafollette High School, um, and it was so hard just to get into that because my mom had six. So I was in Wisconsin, but it was so hard just to get a freshman job. And I said, I've been a, a varsity coach for almost twenty years, and I'm coaching freshman basketball. So when I got home, that was humbling a little bit. But getting home. Uh, getting back at Calvin Park, being a varsity coach, winning conference, that just, hey, that just made my day. I'm serious. I, I can't stop smiling. Uh, the kids are looking at me like I'm crazy, but it's been a great ride. I've been enjoying myself. When you look at this, Coach, uh, you know, there's a there's a history of basketball at Kelvin Park. 1943, they had a team that went to the quarterfinals. But also, isn't Abe Saperstein, they named the auditorium after him, the guy of the Globetrotters. And so there is some history of some really quality basketball coming out of Kelvin Park. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's, there's great history. Uh, Abe Saperstein, uh, I see that every day. Uh, you know, really proud of that the auditorium. Uh, and we want to start that tradition again. Uh, I think we have some Great players come through there recently, but didn't get the recognition because of the school. So I think uh, we're going to turn that around. You know, I think we got some good kids coming in. I think I'm going to have a good team next year. I have a, a junior. His name is Terry on Minifield. He's going to be one of the outstanding players. Of, uh, I mean, he's, he'll be a junior next year. I think he's going to be out, one of the outstanding players of the conference next year. Expect big things from him. And, you know, I expect us to keep growing. Hey, I was gonna say, how do you, how do you build on that from this year into next year? You know, what, what what do you do with the team to to try to build on that success? Oh, we uh, we go straight to summer basketball. You know, uh, it's just like football. We got spring football uh, to build the program. And then you have summer basketball to build the program for next year. So it's about keeping our kids on the right page, on the right track. Um, you know, keeping them around us, making sure we all headed in the right direction. Do you, do you get a lot of the kids that also played football and maybe might do track for you too? Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure of that. But so, you know, we had uh, 35 kids already sign up for track, and that that that's exciting right there. You know, because those were the football players or the basketball players. Those are just other kids in school that want to do something to help the school. 
So, so as a coach, you know, especially I guess when you look at all the sports, how nice is it to kind of have a you know a consistent set of kids almost through through your entire school year as well? Oh well, that, that's great. You know, uh, when you have kids that are uh, they buy into it and they give it their all, I mean, it makes everything much easier for the coach. You know, I want to be the first coach in Chicago public school history to win conference championships in three different sports in the same year. So. That's my goal. <laughs> hey, you know, when you also look at this, they're in school to get an education. How much emphasis do you put on that as a coach for them to get their schoolwork done and to work hard that way? Uh, we don't We don't play any games with that. We, we want the kids to treat school almost like a business. You know, get up and come to work just like it's a job. You come to school to do your thing, do what you're supposed to do, stay on the right path. Uh, you got time for no plan. You know, kids have to see, they start seeing their future, start understanding what it takes to get to that future, you know, your goals in life. So, you know, we push that. You know, we, we want you to set goals. We want you to also be dedicated enough to follow the procedure to get you there. You know, they have to go to class. You have to be on time. You have to be one of those kids that are inspired, inspiring other kids. So that's the kind of people we want around us. We want somebody who's, who's very positive and going forward. You know, get all that negative stuff away from us. So that, that's, what, that's what we push towards. And, and I think we got that. You know, we didn't have an eligibility problem this year, so that was great. Uh, and I think the kids understood it, you know, as, as far as what I was saying. You have to be serious about this. You know, you can't have one without the other. You can be the best player in the world and never get on the court because you're great. You know, Coach, my wife graduated from Kelvin Park, so I think a lot of that's cool. So congratulations on that big win. And, man, we sure appreciate you having on today, coming on the show today. I appreciate you, Dave. Thank you, man. Hey. I really appreciate you doing the interview for me. I've been getting a lot of calls. People have been telling me, you know, about it. And I'm sure people are listening to it. But so I really appreciate you calling me today. So and tell your wife I said hi. Um, you know, this year we're going to get a banner in the gym for the boys' basketball team. I said the one thing that's good about that is I already got a banner up there for girls' basketball. So that would be great. <laughs> so you, you make sure that when you're famous, you remember Dave and Matt, won't you? <laughs> I'm sorry? When you get real famous and you're signing uh, autographs and stuff, you'll remember us, won't you? I ain't going to never forget you guys. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> hey, thanks so much, Coach. We'll talk to you soon, okay? Hey, thank you. Thanks for everything. You bet. Now, how refreshing is that, Coach? Tony Gaddis from Kelvin Park. And I love the guy already, really. Yeah. No, it, it just... You know, and that those are the stories you like to hear. I mean, he's coaching football, basketball, track. Just like you know. the old days. Exactly. And, and he's obviously having a big impact on those kids' lives, uh, you know, and really getting a chance to, to be in front of them and be with them from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. So it's just it's a great story. Chicago needs to put them on a focus, a school like them yep. or another school, and say we actually do have some coaches in there that right. care about their kids. And yeah, that, that needs to be one of their, their yeah. banner schools there, yeah. Winning national tournaments and stuff's okay, but you got to have – Coaches that have a, exactly. a human side to them. Yep. Hey.